In my last video, I talked about making a router table, um, but it is cold here in Northern Ohio and my garage. I do have a heater, but it is cold in here. Um, I don't know if you can see my breath, but I can uh, sure feel it. Um, so this is gonna be my first short video. So I'm gonna do this intro really quick and get out of the garage. So I've noticed in a couple of my cuts, I've got a lot of movement in my Z axis. Um, I can see it in my cuts that I have here. It's not cutting in and plunging in straight. Um, and I do have my uh, CNC software set up to where it does a ramping plunge where it starts and then it ramps in before it gets to depth and then goes. But even with that, I can see the movement in the material and in um, the router. So in this video, I'm going to talk briefly about adding linear rails to the Z axis. Stay tuned. All right, I'm back inside where it's a bit warmer um, that I can work on the new Z axis of the work BCNC. Um, so what I did is I 3D printed some parts that I designed in my 3D um, CAD software for the new plates for the Z axis. Um, so this one right here is using um, the, I think it's the MGN um, 12 linear blocks and rails. Um, so it slides pretty well. Um, I got the 3D printed pieces. Now I did add some new different holes right here um, just in case I wanted to upgrade to the 15 linear blocks. Um, it's not necessary, but I, I wasn't sure how these 12s would work. Um, and I also 3D printed a new part for the X axis. Um, the thought is there that I'm going to upgrade to linear rails on the X axis as well. So I added whole locations for those blocks and in addition to the original locations for the wheels. So now that I have this all put together um, and it works well, that I think I'm going to go out and machine the aluminum. Um, I'll, when I get to that part, I'll give you the speeds and feeds on how I did that. I also 3D printed some spacers for the linear rails so that when I stick them on and before I tighten them down, I have them spaced exactly where I need them um, to be spaced. All right, let's go out and machine those uh, new aluminum plates um, for the Z-axis. The aluminum I found is on Amazon. It comes in a two pack for about $40 and that's a 12 by 12 by quarter inch thick uh, material. The router for bit I'm using for this first pocketing uh, cut is an eighth inch single foot bit with a speeds of 10,000 RPMs and a feed of 20 inches per minute with a depth of cut of 0.012 and a step over of 34%. The second bit I'm using is a 332nd single flute bit with speeds of 10,000 RPMs, feed 14 inches per minute, and with a depth of cut of 0.01. For the perimeter cut around these two parts to cut them out, I did something a little different. Um, I did a double cut. Um, I did two parallel lines next to each other. Um, I learned in the past that there's a little bit of chattering when you just do one single cut, the deeper you get. So by doing this, I cut on the outside the first cut, the second cut cuts the inside and makes a nice clean pass. Um, I just found it a lot easier and cleaner to do this um, without chattering. Before doing the final cut around, I decided to add some screws to the holes. That way I don't have to cut any tabs off um, after the parts are um, finished being machined. This final cut around the perimeter is an eighth inch single flute, the first one I used. Uh, feeds of 18,000 RPMs, feeds of 30 inches per minute with a depth of cut of 0.012. For all the materials I'm using, bits, aluminum, the linear rails, I'll put a description in the link below with uh, the location where I found everything that I used for this uh, upgrade. That turned out really well. Um, I'll just have to double check to make sure all the holes are the right size for the screws, but that turned out pretty well. Now that I got everything unassembled, I can start reassembling it. Um, so I'm going to slide these linear rails onto the Z axis.
So one of the things I needed to do um, before adding the linear rails is add some grease in there uh, just to make sure that they move nice and smooth on those linear rails. I think I've got it all ready to go back together. So I've got, I got the x-axis, I got the z-axis, oh, and they should be able to bolt together like that. All right. All right, I've got the uh, x gantry back together and I've got the z ready to go. I just need to line it up and bolt it together. So. He's lined up. All right. That is a lot more stable. Still a little bit of movement, but not near as bad as it was before. So this finishes up the upgrade of the linear rails for the Z-axis. Um, they turned out fantastic. It made the Z-axis so much stiffer than before. Um, a lot happier with it. Um, this kind of goes in line with the uh, Shapeoko line of CNC's where they've started adding uh, linear rails to their Z-axis as well. And their upper grade ones are adding linear rails to the Y and X too. Um, which is an upgrade that I want to do eventually. Um, I'll eventually get there. But that'll finish up this video um, of the linear rails. Oh, before I go, I wanted to kind of show you these uh, dust shoes that I found from a website, website called Pawn CNC. Um, I'll put a link in the description, um, several versions of the dust shoe um, for dust collection for your CNC. Um, this one works fantastic. Um, it's got this magnetic brush shoe that you can, it snaps on underneath, holds it in place really good. And then I also 3D printed a uh, holder for the dust collection and it just snaps right in there like that. So that ends this video and I hope to see you on the next one.